So here's a nice example of organized pneumonia. Organized pneumonia is actually pretty common, I think probably underdiagnosed. And so these are some typical findings, basal predominant consolidation, oftentimes with adjacent surrounding ground glass opacity. Usually organized pneumonia is basal predominant. And in the axial plane, it's gonna be bronchovascular predominant and or subpleural lung preponderant. Some areas we're seeing either this perilobular predominant consolidation, for example, in here in the left lower lobe, perilobular consolidation, or some areas that really look like the reverse halo sign that we talk about. The, someone might make the argument that really, this is just a large area of multi-lobular perilobular consolidation. But anyways, typical imaging appearance here. Some teaching points. I think we talked about distribution already of typical organized pneumonia. Oftentimes organized pneumonia, when it's active, will give you these areas of bronchial dilation. And so it's actually probably not appropriate to call these areas traction bronchiexis. I know because we are dealing with a diffuse lung disease, there's a tendency to want to use that lexicon. So when you see the bronchiexis, you want to call it traction bronchiexis. But remember, when you say traction bronchiexis, you are saying that this is irreversible bronchiexis, irreversible airway dilation related to fibrosis. And so I'll tell you that most of these cases where you see these areas of bronchial dilation, they're transient. After the organized pneumonia heals or essentially goes away, the airways very often return to normal or near normal. So even though it looks like there's some architectural distortion here in bronchiexis, it's not really bronchiexis, it's really transient bronchial dilation. And so let's look at the follow-up CT just to exemplify that. All right, well, let's look at the follow-up CT, which was performed two months later. And we see that area of consolidation in the left lower lobe where there was apparent bronchiexis has now resolved. It's sort of, sort of in this area here, kind of laterally within the right lower lobe. And we see that those airways have returned to essentially normal. Perhaps maybe this airway is slightly dilated, but relative to the internal reference of the adjacent pulmonary artery, looks to be okay and the consolidation has has gone away so if we look at the ct scan globally you'll note that a lot of those areas of consolidation and ground glass opacity in the lower lobes have resolved but now there are new areas of consolidation with adjacent ground glass opacity another thing to note is that now there is this background diffuse ground glass opacity and in some areas the ground glass opacity has a nodular configuration, some areas having even a granular configuration, almost like central lobular ground glass nodularity, as we see here in the superior segment of the left lower lobe. So these are less common phenotypes that we see in patients with organized pneumonia, but they have been described. But really what you're really looking for is these focal areas of consolidation, often with adjacent ground glass opacity. And very often you're gonna get these areas of transient bronchial dilation, which very often will go away. In some cases, these patients do develop some degree of pulmonary fibrosis, but usually these will heal. Organized pneumonia has a much better prognosis than most of the other diffuse lung diseases. It tends to be very corticosteroid sensitive. This patient was not treated with corticosteroids, has pretty modest symptoms given the degree of pulmonary abnormality on the, the previous CT scan. And again, this was due to immunotherapy, possibly compounded by radiation exposure as well. So we know based on the literature that a substantial number of these patients with organized pneumonia actually have secondary organizing pneumonia rather than cryptogenic organizing pneumonia. And I think uh, some people, and myself included, believe that most cases of organized pneumonia probably have a cause. So in effect, they probably are not cryptogenic. If you look at the literature, they say about 60% of cases are secondary. Some people say about 50%. I think it's probably more like 70 or 80% of cases. If you dig hard enough, you could probably find a cause for the organizing pneumonia. And so cryptogenic organizing pneumonia likely in clinical practice is not as common as secondary organized pneumonia. So the literature is a bit mixed on that, just for your information. So some common cause of organized pneumonia that we see, medications, obviously, immunotherapy seems to be a big cause of this. And now that immunotherapy is really coming into play more with oncological indications, we're going to see much more of this. Other things as well, radiation therapy, classically in breast cancer, the organized pneumonia doesn't 
occur where the radiation hits the lung. Typically, it's, it's uh, more diffuse and actually can involve the contralateral lung as well. Because remember, the organized pneumonia, it's really a healing response and it's an inflammatory lung disease. And so when the lungs get dinged with that radiation, it sets off this inflammatory cascade and you can get the organized pneumonia bilaterally and not even in the area that the lungs were irradiated. Other things, obviously, we talked about connective tissue disease in the past causing this, specifically myositis. So polymyositis, dermatomyositis, the antisynthesis syndromes, even aspiration can set off organized pneumonia and bacterial infection um, or just regular infection as in and of itself as it heals can be associated with some degree of organizing pneumonia. And there's, again, a long list of other things associated with organized pneumonia. Those are the big ones that I usually see in my clinical practice.